Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are looking at Isaiah this week. And some may question why. Why are we spending so much time in the Old Testament? There is so much in the New Testament, so much Jesus, so many things that we should be learning from Jesus. Jesus is God, and God has existed much longer than just Jesus bringing salvation into the world, which is essential, but the Old Testament is pointing to that. And if we spend a little bit of time in the Old Testament, we will discover that God speaks. Now, we might dismiss the Old Testament because God is speaking to the Israelites, or God is speaking to the nations of the time of the Israelites. Some of us don't read the Old Testament because we're just happy that God's eyes are not upon us and he is pronouncing judgment on groups of people that lived thousands of years ago. As long as his eyes are not directed towards me, okay, another day. There's nothing new under the sun. We're going to show that today by looking at the world through the eyes of God thousands of years ago. And if you didn't know better, you would believe that God was looking upon the world as it is today. Let me show you what I mean. Isaiah 5, 20. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. What sorrow for those who are heroes at drinking wine and boast about all the alcohol they can hold. Is that thousands of years ago or is that yesterday? Before there was social media influencers, before there was corrupt politicians and government bureaucracy, before there was the 24-hour news cycle of CNBC and Fox News, the world was broken. And the same things that we struggle with, with the division and the chaos and the hatred and the noise, has existed for a very, very long time. And God sees this brokenness. And God judges this brokenness. And those who perpetrate all of this noise and confusion will be held responsible for it. So before we struggle and, and get sucked into the, the anger and the frustration of this world, we need to recognize that God has been doing battle against these demonic forces for a very long time. When compared to eternity, we are just a breath. But even if we compare ourselves to, the, to, to time itself, we live a very short time. And because of that short time, we often have a very narrow perspective on the world. And I imagine through the ages, no matter when godly people lived, they felt very similar to how we feel. That the world is filled with evil and sin and brokenness. Where is God? When is he going to show up? Some of the comfort that we can draw from reading Isaiah and the prophets is that God is speaking to these things throughout the ages. God has not turned a blind eye. God is well aware of the brokenness of the world. The plight of those who are are living in the light and desiring to bring glory and honor to him. As we turn to chapter 10,
And we see evidence of this. What sorrow awaits the unjust judges and those who issue unfair laws. They deprive the poor of justice and deny the rights of the needy among my people. They prey on widows and take advantage of orphans. What will you do when I punish you? When I send disaster upon you from a distant land? To whom will you turn for help? And where will your treasure be safe? Trust that God sees more than you see. Trust that God is not absent from where he belongs. Trust that this brokenness that we are called to live in has purpose. Trust that God has a plan to eradicate all of this noise and chaos and bring us to a place of peace for eternity. What seems to us to already be an eternity because we've been born into this brokenness and the struggle is real. We must be willing to endure so that those that still might be saved will have the same opportunity that you and I have had. Same opportunity to be rescued from the darkness and brought into the light. But please remember that God has seen it all. God has seen powers rise and powers fall. Power, God has brought judgment against the, those who oppress and cheat and steal. God is asking us to hang on just a little bit longer so that someone today can be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the strength to, to, to go another day. Nothing seems to make sense, Lord. We open up the, the headlines today and sorrow, pain, corruption, and tragedy jump off the page. It seems that there is no one worthy of being called a leader. You have called us to submit to the authority that you have placed over us. We choose to do so, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. But Father, we place our faith in you. Help us to keep our eyes upon you so that we rise above all the noise and the chaos, trusting that your plans are the only plans. Our salvation is not found in a political party. Our salvation is not found by the talking heads in the media. Our salvation will not be found through social media influencers. Our salvation is found only in you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for turning the volume down on you, but help us, Lord, to turn the volume down on the world and focus on what you desire for us to accomplish here. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of deliverance. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of bringing us home very, very soon. Until that day, Lord, help us be equipped to accomplish all that you desire to accomplish through us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God speaks. Are you listening? Well, hopefully you'll listen to me tomorrow. Till then, know that I love you and I miss you. And please be good. <laughs>